Hey there guys, this is Stygi and Rakshasa, and welcome to the final installment of my Tomb Raider Legend playthrough. I actually have to think there, I can't believe I'm already at the, the final part of, of Tomb Raider Legend. It's taken about a month on and off, uh, so for the time that I do have, um, I record these sessions and they don't take too long, so... I'm just happy and kind of surprised that I'm finishing it this soon, but uh, yeah, Cross the Manor, um, in my opinion, Tomb Raider Legend has the best iteration of Cross Manor in all of the Tomb Raider games. Um, the classic ones, I think Tomb Raider 3 has maybe the second best, Tomb Raider Anniversary might have the third best, and even Cross Manor and Tomb Raider Underworld, which was an actual level in the main story, is also one I enjoy, but this one right here is the most nostalgic, like, um, the ambient uh, Craft Manor track that Charles Solomon made for this level is some of the best pieces of ambient music I've ever heard in a video game, and I get, like, if I listen to this track, I kind of, uh, I don't know, it reminds me of being young, like, the Croft Manor loading screen paired with the music, it's just, it, it, it makes me feel really weird, you know, it's nostalgic, but it kind of hits me a certain way, and, yeah, you could say that you get kind of, I get kind of emotional listening to it, because it, it that is video games, and as I've gotten older, when I play these, these um, childhood games of mine, it really, um, I don't know, the, the, the power music has and the power video games have to make you feel nostalgic is, is very much apparent. And yeah, I just, I love this level so much. I love the music so much. It's a very short, uh, but very sweet level with all its little secrets and, and things like that. There isn't any enemies, just interactive, um, I guess you could say interactive uh, structures that you shoot. Um, like wooden planks in the library and that um <laughs> that rock switch that oh let's not press it let's shoot it <laughs> forward you know that's the only reason that's the only reason why we have the pistols but um regardless there's still a lot to do we're actually in the library now and this is where Alistair is you can get all of her um you know, pieces of equipment, the grapple hook, the pistols, and the light source, but, uh, and obviously in certain parts of the level, you actually have to have either the grapple hook or the pistols or something to make progression. So we start off getting the grapple hook, then we get our guns, and then we get the light source. Uh, just, you, it's, you're gradually just unlocking more and more things. Um, another aspect of the level is, you have to read, I guess you could say, tablets, I think they're tablets, that have um, passages on them, and once you interact with the tablets, then you can interact with, for example, these coloured books in the library. Uh, the, one of the last um, tablets that we read um, mentions that if you press the books in a certain order, it will unlock something, and um, you actually can't interact with the books until you read the tablets, so that's kind of how it works. Uh, until we get to the final section of the level, um, where we interact with the uh, Athena statue, but that's like 20 minutes away. <laughs> um, so yeah, what else can I really say? Um, apart from the music, um, apart from the puzzles, I guess the overall design of the level is also quite gorgeous. Uh, this manor was inspired directly from um, the Croft Manor in Tomb Raider, the Tomb Raider movie in 2001, so um, it's taking direct influence, and the hall is so iconic, um, just, like, I remember when I was younger, I was like, okay, I want to live in a house like this, this is the house I want to live in, very ambitious, but hey, it's not impossible, you gotta start somewhere, but, um, yeah, just the structure and the, the little secrets, like, here, um, letting her read it. So it's basically mentioning twin sisters that leave their homages unguarded, which is quite um, ambiguous, but it's actually in the pool room. There are two statues, and if you interact with them and part their um, backs to one another, it obviously is the solution to the puzzle, which is quite, uh, you know, it's cool. Also, I couldn't, I couldn't not 
put Lara in a sexy bikini for the water section, so that's exactly <laughs> what I did. Uh, and don't worry, I made sure that everyone can get a good look at um, her hair, because her hair looks lovely, of course, that's what we're all looking at today. Um, <laughs> yes, if you didn't know, I mentioned in the first, um, the first uh, installment that if you unlock every single secret in the game, you unlock the bikini outfits, so it's kind of incentivizing, you know, players to unlock everything, so you get to see Lara in this bikini. Now granted, I have actually modded the bikini to my... <laughs> sounds so fucking weird to my preference. I don't know, I like the colour black, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna put her in a black one, why not? Um, for me, it's just about the look and style, I'm not getting any kicks out of having pixels on the screen, you know, or if that makes sense. Um, but I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that do, you know. Uh, maybe like, <laughs> I don't know, not me, I can get my action, don't worry. Um, but yeah, enjoy the Lara in a bikini, why not, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, here we're in the pool room, and this has its own little puzzles and its own little unique interactions. And there's, I'm also obviously while you're doing the puzzles and, and searching through the mansion, you can obviously pick up rewards just like in any other level. Um, this one requires you, or this room rather, requires you to pull out these fish statues so that you can actually platform and make your way along them. Um, you also have to grapple out a spear. One of the statues here has a, an interactable spear that you can grapple so you can swing across. Uh, I pull it out there. So everything is prepared and now we can actually start our climb in the pool room. So yeah, we're making our way across and we're doing it in dazzling fashion. Another thing I forgot to mention is that um, if you didn't read, actually, yes, if you didn't read the tablet, I don't think this part will trigger here. I actually forgot, but the way it works is you actually part their backs to one another and then you join the spears. I did it the wrong way around. You actually have to start with your twin sister statues actually having their backs to one another and then you cross them over, as you will see here in just a moment. So, yes, here is the next tablet. Tomes, a cerulean, topaz, viridian, and crimson, which, uh, yeah, is in the library, so we're going to interact with those later on. Not before I put these spears together, yeah, there we go. And then that little um, tongue. <laughs> these switches I always found to be so funny, you actually tap their tongue and then that actually opens a gate or a switch or whatever. But, uh, yeah, another great thing about her pool is that there's actually a secret entrance. Um, God, I love this level. I love all these little, like, I just love how this gorgeous mansion has, like, all these secret passages and it's, it's, it's like Harry Potter or something, you know, like fucking Hogwarts, but you're this rich, aristocratic, sexy British archaeologist. It's, it's just phenomenal. <laughs> but yeah, um, this switch, if we put this, I couldn't grapple this, uh, the, the sphere here, whatever, um, it actually brings down a plant, it brings down a fixture with a plant on it, and we're actually going to swing along across that to get a silver reward, uh, that's the, the purpose that it serves. The lighting here is gorgeous. I'm just getting a quick look at it before swan diving in. Oh, God. I love this level. <laughs> I love Craft Manor in this game so much. It's uh, very much uh, it's very much the best iteration of Craft Manor, in my opinion. Oh, 
like you have the min like there's very I love how the the some of the designs of the statues and even the meander print here in her um in the interior like in the on the inside of the pool itself it's very much Greek it's it's very much reminding me of the classical antiquity with the ivory statues with um you know, the Greek, you have Athena statues. Well, there's an Athena statue in her main hall that we'll see later, and you have the meander print. It's just... I can see why I was interested in this when I was younger, because it's, it's gorgeous. It, like, everything about this level is just gorgeous. The manner, the music, uh, everything. It's, it's quite amazing. Now... Here we've made our way inside of the gym. Uh, <laughs> if uh, any person would have a gym like this, it would be Lara Croft. Here I do a little glitch or a little exploit. You can actually swan dive your way to that silvery board and skip a lot of platforming. Um, I did. I do remember that you could do that, so I, I did it there. Um, what can I say? I actually go ahead and actually show you how to do it. Uh, the second time around, just because I felt like, oh, I cheated, I'm, I said I'm not going to, you know, use exploits or glitches to, um, to break, I don't know, to break the game, so I actually just do the regular routing as you would. The, the thing about the gym and this room is that there's a lot, I mean, a lot of platforming, and it's, it's quite confusing, to be honest, like, it's a labyrinth, labyrinthian in a way, because you have to grapple certain, um, God, what would you say? The stone replica with the with the ledges in it, these, whatever, the crevices, the stone platform with the crevices in them can actually be grappled in the center, and then you can actually get to other areas if you grapple it and make it face in the way. But, um, yeah, don't mind me. It's very hard to describe uh, uh, the names of the, the structures, but as you can see here, you can grapple it like so. Now we have uh, access to a different uh, section of the, the gym. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of rewards in this part of the level as well. So the only purpose this room serves is purely to get the rewards. There's no tablet in here. There's no puzzle per se. Well, the whole room in and of itself is a puzzle, but it's only to get the rewards, and it's not to actually reach the end game or the end um, the end level screen. So. Yeah. Here I'm just skipping some time because I need to actually make sure, okay, am I doing this right, you know, and I'm taking breaks in between, so um, yeah, don't mind those little random cuts. I should probably... <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> I should probably talk about the future of this channel, or rather the next game that I may be showcasing. Now, in the... Le I think it was England. I think it was in England I mentioned that I may do a live commentary of Tomb of the Angel of Darkness. Um, I actually have that game installed on uh, my device, but the thing is I'm having a hard time getting the mods to work because... You know me, I love my mods, and I'm trying to mod Lara to, um, basically I'm trying to change her outfit to resemble the Tomb Raider legend. Um, there's like a really, really, really cool outfit that I want, to, want her to wear, where um, she's wearing like a, a black cap, she has a cap suit on, and her black leather boots, but her face and her model is resembling her model in Tomb Raider Anniversary Edition, so it looks really cool, and I want to get that mod to work, because if I'm playing for the whole game, I would like Lara to look nice, and I would like to experience the game differently, you know, because I've never played Tomb Raider uh, Angel of Darkness with mods, so it will be a first for me, so, yeah. I also have the, oh, what's it called? The Scoo? It's like source code... No, what is what what is it? It's um Oh whatever. It's the it's the it's the hack or the the app that lets you actually play the game any way you want. You can have all the weapons you want and you can start at any level you want. For example, 
In the final version of Tomb Raider and Angel of Darkness, they removed the akimbo pistols, her iconic du dual wield pistols, but in the in the app you can actually mod them in, you know, so that's pretty cool. So I do want to be able to toy around with that in my Let's Play as well. So just little things like that I'm having a hard time uh, with. Not the not that app, but actually modding Lara's outfit, so I will have to figure out how to do that. Uh, what else? Ah, yes, another actual another actual game that I'm considering to you know play on this channel is Dead by Daylight. Um, it is very common, I've noticed, for Tomb Raider fans to be fans of Resident Evil on Silent Hill, probably because, you know, uh, there are strong female leads and, you know, sexy, you know, leading girls um, in that game, as well as men, because we do love men here as well, or well, I do anyway, but um, you have, you know, you have Jill Valentine, who is an icon of horror and of video games but you also have Silent Hill, you have Heather Mason, you have or Cheryl Mason is her real name technically and these are games that I live by and I love and definitely Dead by Daylight is a game I've been playing for four years and I do play it competitively. Um, if you are unfamiliar with Dead by Daylight it is an asymmetrical survival horror game, a multiplayer survival horror game with four survivors and one killer and the objective of the killer is to put the survivors on sacrificial hooks and sacrifice them to the entity which is just an alien god and the survivor's objective is to repair five generators and escape through exit gates uh if you've never played that by daylight before and you're listening to it now the description i'm giving you you're like what the fuck how would that work in practice i i often think the same thing but uh it does. And also, I fucked up the jump because Lara auto-aimed to the center and she didn't grab the ledge, so I'm frowning and angry here. I'm actually going to go off track here. I'm actually showcasing the airwalk glitch. I think in the Peru level, or the Peru recording, I mentioned this airwalk glitch that breaks the game. That is it at its most basic level, but that glitch lets you void through walls and just do crazy shit, and it's so stupid. But I actually figured I'd showcase it here just because the game decided to mess up my jump. So that's the airwalk glitch. It's, it's crazy. You basically activate it by aiming as soon as you trigger the stumble animation on step surfaces. Surfaces that only have like a slight, you know, height on them. Um, that's how you activate it. It's very easy to activate. But, um, yeah, that's how Dead by Daylight works. And that's a game I would love to show on my channel. Show some good um, survivor gameplay and show some good killer gameplay because that game has a very unique fan base and there's very much a kind of pull, you know, a tug of war between people who play as killer and people play as survivor. And then, then, and then there's me who plays both roles at the highest level and plays the game almost flawlessly. It's like, come on. Like, there isn't a bias here. The game can have moments where it's completely killer-sided, but there can be moments where the game is obviously survivor-sided. It, it depends what level you're playing at. And, and there's, very, there's so much variables. It's, it's an asymmetric game for a reason. Uh, but yeah, the game, oh. It's getting back to a good state, but it has a lot of work to do. Because um, uh, Home Sweet Home is another asymmetric survival horror game that people are starting to kind of focus on now. And, um, you know, if Dead by Daylight, if the, if, the, 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 if the developers, oh my god, if the developers don't get their act together, I can see that game losing quite a lot of followers and a lot of players so they really need to get their act together quick uh but this is something you guys should watch out for um of course i'm starting this channel as a tomb raider you know channel or a tomb raider you know I, i'm going to play multiple genres of video game but tomb raider will always be on this channel there will all there's always time for tomb raider i have nothing but time for tomb raider uh so yeah that that's basically the future so look out for maybe Resident Evil, you made her obviously from Silent Hill, and of course Dead by Daylight, because you do need to have a modern game in there. 
I'm also a fan of fighting games. I play them competitively as well. But uh, yeah, these are things you guys can look out for. And if you have any suggestions even or any recommendations, uh, please let me know because I will definitely, you know, I'm, I, I will read every comment and I'll do my best to respond. And yeah, I'm, I'm excited to play more games and just become more familiar with uh, with commentating, as I said, you know, because it, it, this is my first playthrough ever. I think I've done an okay job for it being my first time, you know, talking to a camera or sorry, talking into a, a mic is quite foreign to me, but I feel like I've gotten a little bit more comfortable and I hope you guys have, you know, bared with me, you know, uh, despite the, you know, there's lots of mm and uh and there's lots of pauses in between my sentences because it's hard to keep a consistent flow with your commentary, but of course I am trying and that's all I can do. <laughs> so if you're bearing with me, thank you. Anyway, that was a good time to talk about all those topics because the gym section is very, it's just me collecting rewards and it's awkward platforming. But this room, we're back to the library. This is the final, well, the second last tablet where it tells us about an Athena statue. Actually, no, it doesn't. It tells us to go to the main hall and then we're going to read a tablet about the Athena statue. Excuse me. <laughs> but yeah. So we're basically going to make our way back after pressing the books in that particular order and reading that tablet. Uh, well, we're going to admire the lovely white backdrop <laughs> outside of the window. I forgot how gorgeous the lighting was in these uh, halls. Everything, oh, every single bit of detail in this level is just phenomenal. I love it. But yeah, this basically... The requirements for this section is to pull this, these tongue statues, press them really quickly, but it's on a timer, so you actually have to swing your way across. And that's really it. You have plenty of time to do so. Pressing these two switches is going to bring up the Athena statue. And the tablet we're going to read basically tells us to put her back. Oh, sorry, put her facing towards the sun. The risen Athena turns to face the sun, whose burden then reveals the golden laurel. And the golden laurel is, of course, the gold reward. And that then concludes the level. So we have her face the sun, and then we step on the pressure plate. She goes down to, I don't know, the underworld, to murder underworld. <laughs> another game I might probably play. Um, but yeah, she goes down there and then there it is. The golden reward is on this platform and it's here for us to take. So we're going to swing our way to the center spear here. And then we're going to drop down and voila. I tried to get a good look at it, but <laughs> the camera doesn't want to cooperate. I'm just admiring the gorgeous view from here, and that's it, guys. That's Tomb Raider Legend in its entirety. Every reward collected and every single facet of the game has been covered. So, yeah, that's Tomb Raider Legend. Um, my god, it, this is my first playthrough completed. I'm so happy. Um, but yeah, what can I say? If you've made it to the end, I cannot thank you enough. It's been very, very fun to record this and and look back through my childhood and play a childhood favorite game of mine and, and playing it well. I feel like I've played it well and I've exhibited, you know, everything there is to show in the game. So I'm satisfied with myself. But yeah, as you exit here, you will get rewarded and 16 out of 16, 10 out of 10 and 1 out of 1. So... If you've made it to the end, I cannot thank you. I cannot thank you enough. And uh, yeah, look out for more gameplay from me. So yeah, 100% completion. I will leave you there. Thank you, guys.